Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Julianne and currently I'm an international exchange student at King University for the spring semester of 2023. I'm living and studying at the Global Campus and I'm living at the Wujongwon dormitory, which is also from the Global Campus. And today in this video, I will show you how to get to the Wujongwon dormitory, how the dorms look like, what facilities the dormitory has, and make sure to stick around to the end where I will give you some general tips which may be of use if you're also thinking of going to QV University as an international exchange student. So this is a map of the Kyunghee Global Campus and this is the part that we're interested in today. Here you will see the main gate and in front of the main gate there are also two bus stops with buses that go every day very regularly which can take you to Seoul. If you go to Seoul by bus it takes approximately one hour to arrive in Gangnam and approximately one hour and 30 minutes or one hour and 45 minutes to other parts of Seoul, for example Hongdae. And then located next to the main gate is the Wujongwon dormitory. I think this is the case for every floor, but as you will notice is that there are some common rooms where you can chill, study or eat during the whole day. This is the big one located on my floor. Oh, and there are some water tabs where you can get hot or cold water during the whole day as well. And then at the end of my hallway, there is a smaller common room as well. So this is the entrance of the room that I share with my roommate. Everyone gets their own bed, closet and desk. And on the left you can see my bed. The bed did not come with sheets, pillow or blanket. So I bought the pillow and the blanket at home plus and I brought the sheets back from home. And under the bed you can see two compartments where you can put clothing or other kinds of stuff. And then next to the bed there is the closet. The hangers I got from someone who is already here, but otherwise you have to buy them yourself. And other than that, you can see it's not too big, but it fits everything that you need. And underneath there's another smaller compartment where you can put more clothing. And then to one side of our room, we have a window where we can look outside and have some daylight. We look towards the road, however, I think that it doesn't make too much noise. So don't feel worried if you think that it's going to be too noisy. And a plus about this view is that we get a really nice sunset. So next up is the desk. This is my desk. And as you can see, there's an upper department where you can store a lot of stuff. Everybody gets their own chair. And as you can see, next to the chair, there are three more smaller compartments. And so this is the bathroom. It is a compressed bathroom. So the shower situation is a little bit interesting. But over time, you'll also get used to that. And then next up are the facilities that the dormitory has. I will start off by showing the facilities that are available on the first floor. And then we will move on to the basement. And when you enter the dormitory over there, there is the Wu Jongwon dormitory office. And over there, there's a study room. And you also have the foreigner's kitchen. You have to sign up for the kitchen and when you do so, you get a little space in one of the refrigerators and you can use the stoves, etc. And then at the other side of the kitchen, there are two more studio rooms. At the first floor of the dormitory, there are two cafes, a Tucson place and Dalway. They have a lot of spots to study. Across from the cafes, there's a printer and there's also a food court where you can get some lunch or dinner. Across from the food court, there is the office of the OIA, in case you have any questions, but also they are also only open during the week. Then there is a little convenience store called the GS25, in case you need anything. And then if you want to send a postcard or a package, you can go to the post office of the Korea Post. Furthermore, there are also some global ATMs, which accept any kind of credit card. And there is also a HANA bank, in case you want to set up a Korean bank account. Oh, and you will definitely also run into this one. And then onto the basement, you enter this one actually directly from the main entrance. 
And here you can find a bookstore where they sell all kinds of stationeries and where you can also buy some Kyung Hee merch. And then next to the bookstore there's the yoga club where you can follow yoga and Pilates classes. And then the last place in the basement which I want to show you is a place where you can do the laundry. They have washing machines and drying machines there. There are also however other laundry facilities for example on the fifth floor. In order to do the laundry you have to get a card and charge that card and scan it whenever you do the laundry. And then last but not least some general tips. With the first one being learning some Korean. It's a very obvious one, I know, but it's a very important one since not a lot of people can speak English here and it can go a really long way if you at least know how to say hi, goodbye, thank you or can I have this. Then another thing which is kind of related to this, nevertheless I think it's still very important to know, is how to be polite when you give something or when you receive something. You use either both your hands or you support one arm with the other. It's a way of showing respect and I think it's very important to know, especially since these are situations which you will come across daily. For example, when you receive or you give uh, money to someone else. So I really encourage you to join a student union. For myself, I've joined BNB, which is the Dancing Student Union, and I've really enjoyed my time so far. It might be very daunting at first, since there are mostly only Korean students and there is a language barrier. However, you won't regret it, and I please encourage you to do so, because in the end, everybody will try to get to know each other, even though there might be some language barrier at times. However, there is a small disclaimer. I think it's only possible to sign up for student unions if you go in the spring semester, because officially that's only when the Korean academic year starts. However, if you're able to, please find a student union that fits you and join it. And then thirdly, try to pack as efficiently as possible. I consider myself an efficient packer. However, I really think that I brought too much clothes specifically. So when you're preparing your trip, Really make sure that you save some space in your luggage to make sure that you have some space left when you go back home and you can take the things that are really valuable and remind you of your time here back home. And I also want to add, of course it's my own opinion so I can't speak for everyone, but if you're short on clothes here and you think you've packed too few clothes, don't worry because if you go to home day, they have really nice clothes there which are not too expensive. And you will look very trendy at the same time. And when it comes to beauty products, I've only really been to all of Young. But I would say that it's a little bit more expensive than I'm used to, however, it's still very doable. And then another recommendation is to bring some things to remind you of home. For example, I brought a lot of photos so I could make my own photo wall here next to my bed. Another tip is to always bring some cash with you because credit cards don't always work here. For example, I have two credit cards with me. For some reason, sometimes either one of them is working or they both aren't working. So in those cases, it's really helpful to at least have some cash so you'll be able to pay anytime as well. And then I really advise you to get a limited data package because it allows you to always use Google Translate, for example. I got my unlimited data package from Jingo Mobile. This is of course not sponsored, uh, but my plan was for four months and I think I paid around 70,000 won, which is around 55 euros, uh, which is around 60 US dollars, I think. But it really allows you to access Google Translate all the time. And which also brings me to the next tip is to download things such as Papago or navigation apps such as Kakao Map or Naver because Google Maps it does work you can look up things on there however the directions don't work on there so that's when you need Kakao Map or Naver Map I think Naver Map is a little bit easier to use especially when you just got here since it's also available at least partially in English however both apps are just as accurate when it comes to giving timetables of the bus the metro or the subway so that's it it's a wrap at least for this video i really hope you enjoyed and it might have helped you in preparing your semester at qe if there's anything that's unclear or if you have questions or if you would like me to show something else please let me know in the comments down below so make sure to hit that like button if you like the video or it helped you out a bit don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next one